Well, hello, grade five. Thank you for joining me for math today. I'm here with your math video for Tuesday. Now, before I get started, I just wanted to let you know that if you would like to submit, some people were asking for the option to submit their assignments right on the assignment function in Teams. I have uploaded today's assignment and assigned it to you on Teams. If you choose to do it that way, you can. You can also do it on a piece of paper, and you can take a piece of a picture of the paper right in your class notebook and add it to your class notebook if you like, or you can just send me a message. If that just seems like too much for you, you can take a snapshot of your work and send it to me. But you now have the option of opening up a page in an, a, like a virtual notebook and writing right on that page and then clicking send and sending it to me. So that is um, something you might, some of you might really find interesting or fun or something different or then you don't have to print stuff. So I'm gonna leave it up to you if that is something that works, okay? Um, and without any further ado, let's go get going with our Tuesday math. Okay, so I am starting with a warm up today uh, because I was looking at the things we need to cover by the end of the year and you guys are on the right track for where we need to be and I thought, why not do some fun math? So uh, make these videos a little bit more fun for you guys. Now, I am going to introduce you to the key fact. If you're looking at this and you're like, I have no idea. I'm gonna give you the key fact. So usually there's one fact in these mashups. So obviously these are two separates. There's one fact that when you solve that fact, it'll help you solve the rest of it. So this one here, what times what is 16? So something times something is 16. Can you think of what that is? Four, t four times four? Oh no, my pen is done. My pen is done. I must refill it. Um, I thought it was gonna be working for this video, but I will switch pens. So four times four. Four times four. Now I am going to ask you to pause the video, knowing now that these are all four. Can you solve this? A giraffe is four. So now I want you to pause the video and try it. Okay. Hope you paused it. I'm gonna keep working so that you can look at the solution when you're done. So looking at this, okay, well, something plus four is 26 and it's a double. So we need to figure out the difference between four and 26. So 26, again, whatever's on this side of the equal sign, if you wanna find out a mystery, you look on the other side and you do the opposite. So you're going, what? 26 is on this side. Something plus 4 is 26, so if we subtract 4 from 26, it'll tell us that we have 22 here. 22, now there's two of them, so each one is worth 11. 11 and 11 is 22, plus 4 is 26. Now we know this one's 11, and this is times something is 66. So what times 11 is 66? 11 times 6. Okay, and then 4 plus two wormies and each one is worth six. So six and six is 12. 12 plus four is 16. All right, on to the other side. So look first for your fact that's gonna help you solve this. It's like your key to opening up the problem. So something times something is 36. That's my, when I look at this, any times I see any time I see a double or a square multiplication fact, I know that it's easy to solve. Six times six is thirty-six. So now I know that each one of these is six. The xi guy is six. Okay. Now um, this guy. So six and six is twelve. So these together. Again, please pause this and try it on your own. You should be using this only to check your work. Okay, so this much is 12, not to dis not, I hope that's not too distracting, but six and six is 12 altogether, plus something is 20. So again, to find what 20, is, what this mystery is, we need to do the opposite. So we take 20 and we subtract 12, and that will tell us that there is eight. So this guy is worth eight. So now we go and we put him here, Okay, and now something times eight is 56. Well, eight times seven is 56. So now I should be able to solve the whole thing. I have six and six is 12, 
12 plus 7, 12 plus 7 is 19. And you're done. Okay, on to Tuesday's daily math for my grade 5 friends. Now today I only picked one daily math. You're welcome. I did a mashup math instead because that's an important skill too. So there's only one daily math today because we did a mashup math instead. Let me know what you think of that. So it says round this number to the near nearest tenth. Okay, so just a review. These are hundredths. These are tenths right here. Tenth. So we are rounding to this spot. So we, again, we look behind here. Is this more than five? You bet it is. So it would be 23.2 because we rounded up. Just like we'd round up if the number was 20, 2,119 and I said round to the nearest 10, you would round up to 2,320. Now that's the same. Doesn't matter. There's just a point there. And we're looking at a different a different number, like a different spot. This has a different place value, but the idea is the same. Okay, right. 78,215 in words. Okay. So, uh 78 thousand. 215. Remember, there's no and when we're talking about whole numbers. Okay. Oh, almost forgot to cross my T on my thousand. So it's 78,215, 78,215. Which fraction is equivalent to one half? So just a reminder, pretend this is my fraction. This is half. So we need to figure out which one of these fractions would be equivalent to one half. Now to make a half, it needs to be an equal denominator. Otherwise you can't have the same as a half. So it's going to be um, there's fourths, eighths, and if I go, if I color in four of those eighths, it's equivalent to one half. So four eighths is equivalent to one half. Equivalent means equal to one half. All right, Karen can skip about 45 times per minute. Whoa, way to go, Karen. How many times could she skip in five minutes? So all we're going to do is we're going to do 45 times 5. Okay, 45 times 5. So 5 times 5 is 25. I put my 5 here. I'm going to do grandma grandpa's way. You can also do partial products. I put my 5 here and now I have two tens to remember up there. Now 5 times 40. I do 5 times 4 is 20 and then I add two more tens so I have 22 tens. 225 times in five minutes. Divide 122 by two. So you guys could do that long division style or I am gonna show you a different way to look at it. I'm gonna take each one of these, my hundreds, my tens, and my ones. And I'm gonna divide each one by two and add them together. Now, you don't have to do this. This is just something that I, when I do problem solving, sometimes I like to show you a different way to do it. So. Half of 100 is 50, so it's 122, so half of 100 is 50, because dividing by 2 is dividing in half, dividing into two pieces into halves. Half of 20 is 10, and half of 2 is 1, so it's 50, 61. Now, to check that, I could do 61 plus 61, 2, 122. Okay, now I'm gonna to switch to the whiteboard view for my multiplication. 844 and we're going to times it by 12. So I'm gonna start by multiplying everything by two. So two times four is eight. And I'm using different colored pens to hopefully help you see this clearly. Okay, and then two times 40 is 80. So I can just put that, so I have 88. I put this in the 10 spot. 
2 times 800, so 2 times 8 is 16, so 2 times 800 is 1,600. So now I've multiplied everything by 2, and you can see that is in orange. Now I'm going to multiply everything by 10. Um, so to do that, I can go through individually and do it if I want. So 10 times 4 is 40. 10 times 40 is 400. 10 times 800 is 8,000. Or I could have just gone 844 and added 0. Whatever it works for you. Now I add these two together. I'm modeling it this way because I think you guys are ready to not see me do every single step and add them all separately. If you still want to do that, you are welcome to. You're also welcome to use box window, whatever works for you guys. So 8 and 0 is 8, 8 and 4, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 1 and 6 is 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, okay, and then 1 and 8 is 9, this is 9,100. I'm going to do 462 times 52, and I'm going to start by multiplying everything by 2, and then I'm going to multiply everything by 50. So I start with 2 times 2 is 4, 2 times 6 is 12. Now watch what I do. I just put, I know I have 100 to add, and I just pop it right up there. It'll be ready for me when I need it. So it's there, and I'm not going to forget about it. I have an extra 100. Okay, 2 times, because 2 times 60 is 120. 2 times 400 is 800, but again, I have one more 100 to add, so I'm just going to write 924. Okay, now I'm going to switch to multiplying by 50. So 2 times 50, 2 times 50 is 100. 2 times 5 is 10. So I do this. I put my zeros there, and then I put 100 up here so I know that I have a hundred to add now I do 50 times 60 so again this would be 5 times 6 is 30 50 times 60 there's two zeros 5 times 6 is 30 so it's 3,000 okay didn't leave enough room for myself 5 times 6 is 30 and then you have those two zeros so it's 3,000 so I don't need to worry about this 100. I can keep it in that place because I don't need it. Now I have 3,000 here, 3,100. Okay, and now I need to do 50 times 400. So 50 times 400. 5 times 4 is 20. And now you're going to add 1, 2, 3 zeros. So it's 20,000, okay? So 20,000 can just go here. So it's 23,100 and 924, and we're going to add these two together to find our final product. So 4 and 0 is 4, 2, 10. Okay, and then 4. Well, sorry, it's technically not 10, but it's technically 1,000. Uh, and then I have 2. So it's 24,024. 24, 24. Okay. I'm going to do 633 and I'm going to multiply it by 14. Okay, so I start by multiplying my one spot number, so 4. 4 times 3, 4 times 3 is 12. So I put my 1s there, I put my 1 up here to remember that I have a 10 that I have to account for. Now I do 4 times 30, well, same as 4 times 3, but with a 0 on it, it's 120, okay? So I'm going to have 100, and then I add that extra 1 in it, 120 plus 10 is 130, so 132. Now I'm going to do 4 times 600, 4 times 6 is 24, so 4 times 600 is 2,400. Now, I put this 100 here, but I really should have put it up here, because look, 2,400, I add one more, it's 2,000, one more 100 is 2,500, okay? So I think I'm going to be a little tight here. I think I need another place, but that's okay. 
Um, now we're going to multiply everything by 10. Oh, no, no, I'm good. And now I'm going to multiply 633 by 10. I'm going to show you the other way you could do it. I know that 633 times 10 is just 6,330. Okay, because I'm just anything by 10, you just add a zero. So now we're going to add both of these numbers together to get our total. 2 and 0 is 2, 3 and 3 is 6, 5 and 3 is 8, and 2 and 6 is 8. So it's 8,862. And I didn't need to move my equation over at all. It worked perfectly. This is the third time I'm trying this one. I keep messing up and either not pressing record or running out of space on my board. So this is the last time I'm doing it, so I better get it right. So 5 times 7 is 35. So I put my 5 there, and I just put my, my three tens up there, because I might need something else in this space. I don't know yet. 5 times 2 is 100. Okay, so it's 130. 130. And you actually want your 100. 100 is going to come up here. 135. So you can put your th your tens down there because you don't it you don't have any more tens going into that spot because it's 100. Okay, now I go five times 900, and I just think okay, five times nine is 45, and I have one more. So five times 900. Okay, five times 900 is 4,500. So now all I do is I add an extra hundred here. So 46, 4,635. Now for the next one, I'm multiplying by 50. Now, math fans, you all know how this works. If 5, I'm pointing to my screen instead of the board. If 5 times 927 is 4,635, 50 times 927 is going to be 4,635 but with a zero, so because again, we're multiplying by a multiple of 10, 46,350. So I just have to write that 46,350. And now, ta-da, I just need to add these two together and I'm done. I can see that I am actually recording this time, so that is a bonus. Five, okay, eight, Nine, four thousand plus six thousand is ten thousand, and then five. Okay, so I apologize for recording that so many times, but you guys don't even know. So I guess I'm apologizing to myself. And now we are back for improper fractions. Oh, it's so improper, this improper fraction. If you're like me and you always spell proper incorrectly, this is a nice reminder that proper only has two P's. It's P-R-O-P-E-R, -E not, if you're me, I'm still struggling. Somewhere in my mind, proper has two P's. It does not. So just a little bit of a side note, and I see this spelt often, P-R-O-P-E-R, -E proper. That means, kind of means is it right, but, you know, improper fractions is just, they don't follow the rules of fractions. It's okay. So here are a few examples of proper fractions. So what do we notice about these numbers? Okay, one thing I notice is the denominator numbers are all big or bigger than the numerator no number. So the denominators are all going to be a bigger number than the numerators. So this is bigger or equal to the numerator. Now here are a few examples of improper fractions. So looking here, you notice, okay, six halves, hmm, that's not a proper fraction because you have more, you have a larger number on top than number on the bottom. Now I'm going to go, so again, numerator, denominator. Here, seven fourths, again, hmm, what this is telling us is you could express this number as a whole number. Um, as wholes. So if you had six halves, you actually have three wholes. Okay. If you have seven fourths, you have one whole, four, one whole. And then on top of the, next to that, you also have 
three fourths. So it's one and three fourths. So we're going to get into how to do this to, on, not tomorrow, on Thursday. Today we're just going into improper fractions. So an improper fraction is where you have more pieces, you're more pieces for your numerator than you do a denominator. Okay. Impraction, proper fraction means your numerator, again, that's the number on top, numerator, denominator, your numerator, oh my goodness, who's writing here? Your numerator is, um, your numerator is greater than your denominator. And that means you have at least one whole. You have a whole. All right, an improper fraction has a numerator that is greater than its denominator. For example, take a look at the picture below. This shows four thirds. There are three thirds on the first circle and one third on the second circle. In all, that makes four thirds. We can write it like this, four thirds, improper fraction. So now it's asking you to write the improper fractions for the pictures below. So we have fifths, I have six fifths here. That is an improper fraction. I have eight, nine, 10, 11. I, I didn't have to count these because I know it's out of eight. So I know this is going to be eight because a whole is eight. Nine, 10, 11, 11 eighths. Okay, three, four, five, five thirds. Looking here, how many halves do I have? One, two, three, four, five halves. So again, that's two holes and a half, but if you wrote it as five halves, it would be a, an improper fraction. Three, six, seven thirds. So this is just where, and you can see in these pictures that an improper fraction is just showing you that you have a whole and a fraction, right? So you have the whole number and a fraction. And if I was to write all my numbers this way, it would get confusing. So that's why they're called improper fractions, okay? Um, it's not quite the rules of fractions. Uh, there is a different way you could write them that is less confusing. It is not an improper fraction. You can make it into a proper fraction. We are going to practice drawing pictures now to represent improper fractions. So five fourths. I'm going to use a straight edge. Okay, so I made a mistake the first time I did this. I tried to draw fifths, and that's not what we're doing here. So I've covered it up with a sticky note, and we're going to try again. So we're going to draw five fourths, and to do that, I'm going to draw two squares. Ish, squares ish, square adjacent objects. <laughs> okay, so these are my two squares, and I'm going to divide each of them into four. So I have fourths. Okay, and now I need to color in five fourths. So I go one, two, three, four, five. In words, this is five fourths. Now, two third or three, I keep doing that. Three halves. So again, I'm gonna draw do, do. I'm gonna draw myself some some shapes. They're about they they're the same size, and I'm going to divide them into half, and then I'm gonna color in one, two, three. So I drew sh two shapes. I divided each shape into two pieces. I know that because of my denominator, and then I shaded in three pieces. So that is what three halves looks like. Three halves, looks like that. Okay, five thirds. I'm just gonna move this up a bit. I'm gonna make my squares again. Actually, these are gonna be more rectangular because it's easier for thirds. 
Oh, we're gonna pretend those are straight. Okay, now I'm gonna divide each of these into three pieces because look, we're working with thirds. Okay, and then I'm going to color in five. One, two, three, four, five. So now I have five thirds, an improper fraction. Okay, seven fourths. So let's go to make some fourths, some quarters. Okay, and now I'm gonna go knit, knit, knit. Oh, never mind, I did this wrong. See, I'm having mistakes all over the place. Instead of restarting, I'm just gonna do it this way, guys. Sorry, it's been um, a lot of math videos that I have been working on today, and they're all starting to blend together. Time for a break soon. All right, so now I have quarters or fourths, and I have seven, so I go one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. All right, so I have seven fourths or seven quarters, but I'm gonna go fourths, okay? Now, it says match the improper fractions to the correct picture. Now, I'm gonna do a couple of these with you and then I would like you to do the rest. Remember, you can do just this part right on, on class notebook if you'd like, um, and I can see what you're doing. So you're just joining the improper fractions to the, cor the correct picture. So seven fifths. So we have to figure out which one of the which one of the objects is broken into fifths. One, two, three, four, five. This is broken into fifths and I can count five, six, seven, seven fifths. So I would draw a line to join the two together. My next one is six thirds. So I want to look for one that's split into thirds and there's two here. This is thirds and this is thirds. But this one has one, two, three, four, five, six. So this one would be that one. Now I'd like you to try eight fourths, three halves, and five thirds. I keep trying to say them wrong, five thirds. I would like you to find those in the pictures. That is the part you're doing on your own today, okay? All right, so that is the end. Uh, once you're done that, you're all done with your map for today. That wasn't so bad, was it? Now, um, I hope you didn't mind the warm up. I'm gonna try and do those more days when we have math. Uh, and I am going to see you again for more math on Thursday. So I'll see you on Thursday.